Hello and welcome to this lesson, lesson 3 from the 40 ADC load balancer course. As we saw in the last two lessons, we learned how we can build our own network lab environment using Pennet Lab. And lesson 2, we saw how we can configure these components, web servers, which is in 40 ADC initial configuration, 40 gate. And we put the interfaces IP so we provide connectivity between 40 gate and 40 ADC and 40 ADC and the backend servers. Now, before diving deeper into the configuration, I want to just provide some concepts which will make your life easier whenever you are working with load balancing technology and premises firewalls or 40 gates this concept is really will help you working on any kind of load balancer whether it is 40 ADC or F5 and 40 gate firewall or Palo Alto checkpoint whichever if you understand these concepts you will be able to work efficiently on the load balancing First, I want to speak from the network perspective. What happened when this external user, or for that matter, an internal user, trying to access your resources here behind the load balancer? He will open his browser. Let's assume that this is web server on port 443 or port 80. So I will open his browser and, for example, write Arab exploit. Arab exploit. Dot com. First of all, he will try to resolve this name to an IP using either his host file or his configured DNS. So this Arab exploit domain name will be resolved to this public IP, which is 200.200.200.200.200.200. So when the packet leaves this external user on Ethernet 0, it will be like the source will be 200.x.x.10, which is our external user IP, this one, and the destination will be 200.200.200.100. .200 so here it will receive, this packet will be received on port 2, as this is the source and this is the destination on your premises firewall here you will need to have two policies or you need to have two configuration components one is you need to have a security policy security policy this policy allowing the traffic which you want to allow allow the traffic Maybe you want to allow port 80, port 443, or if it is a database server, or even if you want to allow SSH connection, port 22. On 200.200.200.100. This, the second component, if you need to have a NAT policy. Because, of course, you will not have your internal IPs, your private IPs, published through the internet, so you will have a public IP and this public IP you will net it internally to a private IP which in this case is our virtual server IP I will show you all the configuration happen on the 40 gate but I want you to understand this part so when the traffic comes to port 2 the source will be 200.200.200.10 which is the external user IP and the destination will be 200.200.200.100 which is your public IP in which, on which you publish your, your services okay so this is the first so you will have like a destination net from 200.200.200.100 you will do netting to 192.168.100 .100 okay so this is the initial configuration you need to have on your premises firewall when the traffic comes on the ingress port with this public source IP and public destination IP you will net it before you pass it through ingress port 3 you will leave the source IP as is and the destination IP will be the virtual server IP which is 192.168.100.100 
this is the first configuration you need to do on your premises firewall or any firewall in between okay so this we finished here that the traffic will come source this will be the source and this is the destination so when it enter here it will come out as this will be the source but the destination will be netted to this virtual IP server so here when the traffic is reached to the ingress interface port 3 as source will be 200.200.200.10 and the destination will be 192.168.168.100 depending on the configuration you are doing on the 40 ADC there are many ways you can do before forwarding the traffic to the web server from network perspective either you can do direct routing something called direct routing this direct routing will leave the source and the destination as is so it will not it will not change the source or the destination so here you are making the 40 ADC as a transparent mode transparent if you put your 40 ADC in a transparent mode this is your direct routing configuration however you will not be able to reach the servers because this server doesn't have the the one the 10.0.1.102 configuration it has 10.0.1 but it doesn't know the virtual ip this virtual ip doesn't know what it is or you can make something called destination net destination net means what here when you receive this packet on this port this will be the source and the destination but before this packet leaves 40 ADC on port 2 this configuration will change the source will be 200.200.200.10 and the destination will be 10.0.1.101 whichever server here in this real server pool okay so in this scenario you are depending that this web server knows how to reach this source so you don't want it to come back to the 40 ADC and the 40 ADC forwards it to 40 gate and 40 gate forwards it to the external URL. you are depending that the server itself knows how to reach this source this could be happen when you have your internal resources and there is a default gateway in this web server where he can reach this source but in that case the traffic will not come back to 40 ADC the web server will communicate directly with the source or the last one which is recommended and use the traffic goes if you are doing any kind of inspection on this 40 ADC because the 40 ADC has the capabilities to do like uh, basic network firewall and web application firewall so you will require the traffic to come back to 40 ADC in that case you will use something called full net we will see each one here what is the difference in the configuration but I just want to give you the basic idea on the network configuration before moving forward you can use here full net which means on port 3 you will receive the traffic source will be 200.200.200.10 the destination is 192.168.100.10 and after you pass through this 40 ADC you will make full net so you will make source net with something called net pool you will define any IP from the same subnet of the real server let's say for example 10.0.1.50 and the destination net will be 
10.0.1.101. So when the traffic leaves the 40 ADC on port 2, the source will be 10.0.1.50 and the destination will be 10.0.1.101. So it will forward the traffic to this web server and this web server will forward the traffic back to 40 ADC and 40 ADC will forward the traffic to the external user. This is the three basic network configuration you can do on 40 ADC. Either you can have direct routing, which will not change the source, which will neither change the source nor the destination, or you can have destination net, which will only it change the destination and make destination net and in this case you are depending that the web server can reach knows how to reach this external user or you can make full net for the source and the destination so the traffic the return traffic passes through the 40 ADC as well this is from a network perspective what is really happening when the external user open the browsers and to type your web server uh, name dns domain name until it reached to your backend server first of all let's summarize what we are said what we have said so here the 200 the 200 the 200 the 100 will have a destination net which will net it to the virtual IP 192.168.100.100 which will have net which will have destination net as well to 10.0.1.101 and the source here only the source net will happen here so until it reaches this stage the source will be 200.200 dot 200 dot 10 but when it leaves the 40 ADC the source will be 10.0.1.50 so the traffic can go through 40 ADC and the return traffic comes back to 40 ADC in case you are doing any inspection or any configuration on the 40 load balancer like network inspection or basic WAF web application firewall configuration okay this is the basic of the network level connectivity between the external user and your 40 ADC load balancer and your external server okay I hope this uh, this is clear enough for you and we will see each step and the difference between each configuration type on 40 ADC and 40 gate as well I hope uh, this has been informative for you and thank you so much